<laughs> when you're not multitasking, you have trouble starting the show sometimes. Yeah. It, it seems to be off and on its way. So uh, welcome to the podcast, March 2nd edition, jam-packed full of stuff, gamey stuff. March but, 3rd, if you're not a leap, you're fucking fascist scumbag. Wouldn't it be cool if it was like um, Daylight Savings Times where only certain states participated in leap year? I, I think it should be more of like a political <laughs> viewpoint thing where like I choose not to acknowledge leap year. The Bible doesn't say anything about a leap year. It's bullshit. <laughs> That's true. I don't I don't remember seeing that referenced once in the Bible. So obviously that means leap year is anti-Christian because anything. <laughs> if it's not brought specifically brought up in the Bible, it's anti-Christian. Exactly. I love it. So Big Macs, uh, those are terrible. Yeah. It, uh, fuck, dude. Half the shit. Um, I'm pretty sure Arby's was mentioned, though, in the book yeah. of, I don't know, in the book of yeah. roast beef. At least the chicken cordon bleu was. <laughs> they, like... Jesus was telling his followers there would be a really fucked up chicken sandwich coming in a few centuries. Yeah, that's like, well, I'm in the mood for chicken, but also cheese and ham. Yeah. Well, I it it's works. Like, it, it's it, it, it's actually delicious, but like, god damn it, Steam, fuck off! You just updated. Um, like the name, and I think it just falls into that stereotype for Americans where anything vaguely French sounds fancy. But, um, like, you think it would be a lot classier of a meal than it is. But instead you get it and it's just fucking handfuls of ham on a chicken and just, and not even a chicken breast, an entire chicken. But, I mean, that's something that, I think a lot of these dishes are things that get made when chefs are drunk. Like, they're just like, well, this will work and put some of this on it and this. Well, that's what's fucked up is that it sound, It actually does sound like something I would come up with, but I wouldn't need alcohol for it. I would just see what I had in my fridge and like, well, oh, I like chicken. I like ham. I could, let's, let's see if these two animals can work together. Well, and I think they could. If you go to any farm that lets the chickens and the pigs roam like in the same pen you'll see them cooperating <laughs> while they're trying to escape yeah i have no idea what i'm talking about i was trying to find a stupid picture i made for the podcast so i could put it in my tweet and as we discussed as the show was starting i cannot do two things at once right <laughs> but, <laughs> but damn it you'll try every week yes. um See, that's the thing. I don't multitask on this show. If I go to Twitter, that just means I stop paying attention to the show entirely. And Which is basically about the time I'm talking about any game that I'm currently playing. Well, not any game. Sometimes you talk about a good game, but most of the time it's like you're telling me about some weird early access thing or The Division. <laughs> um, you like The Division. Admit it. Hearing about it. I, 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 you know, I want, I want to try it at some point, but I, you, you know, I, I didn't even really have any opinion about it until you told me about the Dark Zone stuff. Um, so that'll turn out to be like the worst part of the game. Probably. It'll, it'll be like the nemesis system in Middle Earth where I'm like, yeah, it's good. I don't know why everyone's like freaking out over it it's, yeah like it's a cool first stepping stone but like it needs more yeah from what i guess uh there's some rumors about uh shadow of mordor 2 coming around but i could see it i mean it, it was a it was a good game i mean people people really liked it yeah i didn't really like it but i finished it so that says something yeah i i mean i like that nemesis system but i i just the rest of the game felt like stuff I've been doing for a long time and I, it didn't feel like that one feature was like making everything no, and I else think feel that less one redundant. feature could be really cool in other games like I want a sports game with a nemesis system like <laughs> you get that though like we're athletes like you start yeah, to you, like 
develop that one guy that's always trash talking about yeah, you. Yeah, like I feel like you don't need to make that a system because that's just in other games as it is, and it doesn't make it explicit. Like, uh, hell, fucking Mario Kart. <laughs> hell, any Mario <laughs> game, multiplayer Mario game, Peach will fuck you up. It, 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 and for me, it's always Peach. Like, I don't know why. Um, it, like, in NBA, I I have, uh, like, I'm still playing my career mode in that. I, I have, like, certain guys, like, teams I have to play that I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to guard him. That's and, what I mean if they, like, specifically made it. So, like, in that game, like, say you, like, dunk over somebody and just, like, really embarrass them. Like, the next time you face off, maybe they're, like chopping at your arms a little extra hard trying to injure you or something well it's like it's certain players who their goal doesn't seem to be so much to win the game but to fuck up your stats specifically and just shut you down and like (laughs) it's like yeah your point guard scored 80 80 points this game but you haven't done shit take that and and moral victory and for me it's like it's never like the you know the actual you know elite NBA players like it, it's not Steph Curry like I've had to guard Steph Curry in my game. Luckily, NBA 2K16 can't really match what that guy is actually doing in basketball now. <laughs> yeah, he I, just he just takes 32 footer shots and like yeah and like plans it and it goes <laughs> that's in. The thing. the the if they had made it the Steph Curry in game play like. Steph Curry is actually playing this year. Everybody would be calling bullshit. Like this is the most cheap, unrealistic crap. <laughs> well, one of the developers was actually he he talked specifically about Steph Curry, and he was saying how, like, yeah, we put in all these systems in play to um, encourage and discourage certain habits, and you know, taking these sort of wild three pointers was something that like our game is not designed for you to be able to do. And yet Steph Curry can, he just does it and it's incredible. And we like, we have no way to really program that because it goes against every other system we put in the game because it shouldn't happen, but it shouldn't happen. And it's amazing to watch. That's Um, what I haven't really, cause I don't follow the NBA. I mean, I, I listen to it. Like the people talk about it on the, on them, their sports radio shows, but uh, I don't watch NBA much until, like, the playoffs, and even then it's not that much. But, of course, right. I saw a bunch of him last year when Cleveland played, you know, when they faced off in the championship. And it would be ridiculous. You'd have, like, two or three guys with their hands in his face, and he'd be not, like, at the three-point line, but, like, two paces behind it and just be like... Yeah, he's hey. always at, like, that middle logo between, like, between like the center of the court and, like, the three-point line, there will be another logo, and he'll be just hitting shots from there yeah. for fun. Um, and, and basically it's a spot like, on the court where if like you took those shots in like PYAA or even if you played for school, your coach, even if you made it would like bench you for just taking the dumb shot. Like, right. <laughs> and, and I imagine that's what's going to happen in high schools everywhere. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, pseudo stars are going to be taking those shots and promptly getting sat the fuck down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, but it's because like that can't be programmed into NBA 2K. Like he, Steph Curry doesn't give me problems. It's always like it's always some like pretty good player right now. Like Kemba Walker, who plays for the Hornets, he's a good player, but he fucks me up every time I have to guard him. Because like the like the AI just sort of latches onto like, oh, this guy has trouble defending once a big guy screens him, yeah. and it's like. But I don't have trouble, like, it it punishes me for it. But if I get screened by a bigger guy, the guy who was guarding that bigger guy is supposed to switch. And my player, and that player is not doing that. Well, so I get you need to call him out in the post game press conference. Be like, well, apparently my team hates me. (laughs) Um, So I must be doing that every halftime. But, uh, like so the guy will get a free layup and then it like punishes my teammate grade saying it was a defensive breakdown on my end it's like what the fuck can i do i just got flatlined by like a 250 pounder well, maybe um, you're supposed to call out the switch there's a button press that you're missing 
Probably, like, but I'm not learning I'm, anything I'm else. pretty sure that the few NBA games I have seen this year, like when players get screamed, I can hear them yelling, triangle, triangle. Try. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't, I'm not learning any more button presses. There's a lot more mechanics in that game that I could be using, I think, but I just had my first like 50-point game, so I think I'm good. Um, <laughs> I see. So you're diva status already. Your coach is yeah, like, um, you're, like you're, doing, yeah. you're playing really well, but there's a few things you, you're like, fuck you, I got 50 points. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to restructure my deal, or I'm going to go be a star for a great <laughs> team like the fucking uh, – shit, here's a terrible team. I the Magic. That. Yeah, I'm going to be the lead guy on the Magic. So I'm used to I'm just so used to just like reflexively saying Cleveland, but that's the one sport where that's not true. Yeah. No, they uh, won't. I bet you uh, they probably won't win it this year either. Uh, if Golden State doesn't win it again this year, that's a crime the way they've been playing. But it's not. Well, it's not a crime. It would be a colossal choke. Yeah. Um, like I don't see any team who can beat them, but. But I'm sure people didn't come here for sports radio. Um, yeah, especially from two guys that barely know sports. Like, I, I know, I know, I know a thing or two. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. stats don't tell the whole story. All right, and I know what is the rest of that story. I admittedly earlier when I said, "Oh, and then your point guard does it," was because point guard's like the only position I know in basketball. Like, yeah, like, I, I actually I follow basketball quite a bit. So I know because you're I'm pretty a sad little man. You know, I, I mean, I need sports to distract me from my horrible job where I scan candy for <laughs> scan dirty candy bars that have been there for since I've been hired. And like you, you Even like though you write more than I do, I'd like you to hire me to write your resume the next job you because I want to put like work experience, scan dirty candy. If I That's what I'm putting down. Um, that's at least one of the things I've done at my job. And, and it's so like, I can't like, I don't think I could buy like candy just like at a store anymore, like by the registers because like once you, like I scan all this candy uh, where I work and once you're done, like your hands are just fucking black because you've just touched all this shit. And it's like, my God. <laughs> Yeah, one of the most horrifying parts of my job is when somebody wants to, like, shake your hand afterwards. It's like, I really don't want to touch you. <laughs> it, That's every... the only redeeming part of my job is I shake everyone's hand who I can <laughs> to punish them to punish for them shopping for... here. And there's the people – we get most of our people pay in cash just because the area that we're in. And, like, I love people walk in and they're like, oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> like, oh, I've been sick for the last three weeks. And then they, like, lick their hands. They're like, oh, here, here's my payment. <laughs> and it's like, um, you tell you what, you keep it. I'll cover you this month because I'm not They're just uh, counting their money, like, licking their f- yeah. finger every time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fucking gross. Yeah. Fucking gross. I th- I'd like to think that I'm pretty self-aware when I'm sick like that of like <laughs> how gross it is and kind of keep it to myself. But eh. yeah. I guess I kind of understand the the idea that if I'm this sick and suffering, everybody else should too. <laughs> the world should burn. Right. No, I, I've like I, so many people I've worked with uh, have a. They're always like, "Well, I don't understand. If I'm sick, I come in anyway." And I'm always like, "Well, don't." Yeah. So I don't want to get fucking sick. And if I do get sick, I'm not coming in. So, you know, like, like it's not a point of pride for me to, like, I hate being sick. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I never particularly fill up for working even on, like, my healthiest day. So. So you're one of those, like, oh, like, I woke up and my eyes are a little watery. I better stay home in case it's contagious. I've only taken one sick day since I worked there, and I was practically dying. Um, I no, tried I think, to take I think two. You even like called off the show, and that never happens. Yeah, um, and, and that was—I don't think that was the day they gave me off because uh, <laughs> they're fucking bastards. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, you can be sick for one day. No, but you definitely no, I can't. Had to, be. I had to like come in and like prove it that I was like, no, I'm actually dying. Um, because I touched your dirty, germ-infested movies. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> That's where you say, look, if you don't believe I'm sick, I'm going to lick this, like, the lid of your coffee cup and then take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> Just spitting it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you think don't I'm faking it? Anything. Go ahead and oh, drink that. Oh, good morning, Ben. <laughs> I'll be on the floor. <laughs> Do you really want to risk it? <laughs> Germs can hit you from anywhere. Of course, technically, regardless of whether or not you're sick, I really don't want to drink coffee that you spit in, but... But, yeah. yeah it's more the insult than anything. Oh, yes. Um, but I don't think regular spit would kill you. It would just be gross. Um, if you're really sick, there's a chance it could actually kill you. Um, See, so could that's be one something of those, to keep like... in mind when you're performing your next hit. We could be one of those, like, Discovery Channel or D-News, whatever. They do the little short videos on the internet, like, spit, can it kill you? Spit, can it kill you? Um, we, we should do that. Beat them to the punch. Yeah. Take that, D-News. I'm sure, I'm sure we could get some asshole to drink our spit and, mm. uh, like, and well, watch what happens. Well, I mean, I know there's people that would do it if you pay them. Um, well, I'm not paying them. I'm <laughs> saying we could trick them. Trick them. Yeah. <laughs> this is a blind taste test. Tell us which one tastes like spit. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> That's a, like, how fucked up would that be? Like, there's always those commercials for like sodas and shit where it's like, here, just t- drink from these random cups. And we're just like, at the end of it, <laughs> it's all fucking spit, dude. You just. <laughs> You've just been drinking spit, you idiot. Why are you drinking random crap? <laughs> well, so, so, that's not a video game. Well, it could be a spit drinking game, especially with VR. I mean, that could be the yeah. definitive VR experience. <laughs> Saliva texturing. Um, it's never felt more real. <laughs> like you're wearing all the like Oculus shit, and somebody somebody's just spitting on the top of your head. <laughs> That's the, the thing. Future. VR will never take off until it can actually spit in your face. Like <laughs> that will be the defining <laughs> moment of technology. That is that'd be fucking hilarious to me. Like you're at like E3 at one of their displays, and there's a point in the game where a character does spit at you, and the like. At the <laughs> at that point, one of the developers just makes sure he times it to like spit in your face. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Oh, now, it's real. now I can see the uh, <laughs> the call for that because a lot of these places will just like bring in random people like Derek to uh, to work their booths, and I can see the call back. We're looking for eight very well like <laughs> very good spitters. You know, we need, we need official booth spitters. Excessively watery mouths are needed right now. That's um, hard at a convention, but sh- uh, by the end of uh, the ones that I've been to, there's no way I could spit if, if I wanted to. There's just, like, not a fluid left in your body. I could probably do it. Like, drink, drink enough, like, syrupy bullshit. You could probably... It would, it would be a work shift. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be a job. but I well, That's why we need to go to a convention together. I could be the one to do the interview, and then you could be the one to call them on their bullshit when the game sucks, and you just spit on the ground like, I spit on your game. <laughs> that's like your official job. That, 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 that's a... It's like yeah, the, nobody fills that role. Nobody like criticizes the game before it's even released. Just, <laughs> just go there and be like, what a crock of shit. Well, it's like... You you see all these outlets that go around and at like on the last day they'll go around and be like best in show or most fun you know whatever and give those awards like we'll do the reverse of that like worst in show be like right. you guys had no business being at this show your game's terrible and then we'd be the ones famous for getting punched in the face by a developer <laughs> on YouTube I mean <laughs> views or views I, it doesn't matter if they're good views or bad views right like. I just, I just see this like getting out of control though, like not just even just like an ass kicking, like I'll insult like some small Japanese studio that's like funded by Yakuza <laughs> and like fucking just get cut to ribbons and just uh, say they cut the brakes on your car, but you're typically using uh, city transportation out there. So you'd kill a whole bus. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't like, have a car. So yeah. yeah so they'd yeah. just take out the whole bus. Cause that's Yakuza. They don't care. 
Yeah, they, they don't give a fuck if you insult, uh, you know, <laughs> they probably make the Yakuza games now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> hmm. How how else would those games know so much? Um, yeah, especially about that, like the inner workings of the Hostess Club. Right. God. That's such a weird mechanic. That is so fucking, like, cringy. Like, <laughs> I, I was just like, that really shut down the whole game for me. <laughs> Like, well, I think the weirdest thing is the disconnect between like wh- what a hostess club actually is over there and what we like automatically picture over here when you hear something like that. Like, right. And I never really understood until I, I read, I forget what it's called, but there's a um, a book. It's a, based on a, a, it's from a journalist and it's talking about his experience investigating this actual event. It was a British girl went over to, um, Hong Kong, I think, to work at a hostess club with a lot of college age girls, too, because you make a lot of money really quick and it's not actually prostitution, although that's what we all think when we hear it. That's all Um, what we all hope. But she still ended up getting raped and murdered and being somebody from out of town and it happened like there's all this cover up type stuff and nobody really wanted to investigate. And that's a big part of their economy over there. So they didn't really want to, like, shake that thing that up and. There's like a lot to it, but it was, it was really interesting. But like, it blew my mind that they have these actual clubs where it's like, oh no, they you literally pay girls to basically laugh at your jokes, and I yeah. think that's probably what our podcast needs. Yeah, you know, I think there is uh, like a certain group of people out there who like like getting off is like straight up prostitution is not that important to them so much as to. Like actually feel desired. Yeah, desired, important, and powerful. And like, like that's like, what that you know, whole business is like based around. Like, like prostitution. Uh, I I would argue when it's done right, if it if it can be done right, um, it, like it, it is more of a straight up transaction of just you know, money for a service. Um, but you, like with that, when that service becomes like, hey. May, I don't want to sleep with you. I just want to feel like a really important person. I, like, I need you to make me feel important. <laughs> like, that's kind of a... In, a, in some ways, I, I, uh, I would have to imagine that probably attracts a more dangerous sort of person. Like, because that's somebody who's really fucking desperate. Yeah. And this guy that ended up doing this, I mean, he was... He was an interesting fella. I'll put it that way. Really? Raping and murdering? Yes. But I wish I could remember I, the name of the... It was a really good book. Um, I mean, it's dry because it's all, like, really just this, like, journalist, like, okay, so this is what happened then, and when I was over there, I tried to talk to this person, and this happened, and, you know, then the family, you know, blah, blah, blah. It it wasn't written like a adventure novel or something because it wasn't, it's literally just an account of, and this investigation took years and years. Um, but it was just, it was a, it was a kind of a good read, kind of depressing, but was it what the witness was about? Probably like probably. that was the problem. He was like, all oh, authorities are this close to catching the guy, but they couldn't figure out how to draw the line. But, but yeah, what the fuck does this Tetris puzzle <laughs> mean? What the hell? This line fits exactly, you dumbasses. Why isn't it working? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine on Twitter was like, I want to hear your thoughts about it more. And I like, I was, I was hoping that we could just do like our entire show and then I'll like talk about The Witness for two minutes. Because um, I have beaten it now. Um, but no, I guess that wouldn't be cool. <laughs> <laughs> to make him sit through the entire like show. Well, no, that's exactly what you do. That's what real broadcasters just keep teasing it, so you remind them that like it's coming up. That's you know what? That's I. I, I kind of re- was reminded why I don't listen to a lot of podcasts because uh, not well. We we won't get back on the like sports talk, but uh, the Eagles just re-signed Sam Bradford. Um, and so I, I wanted to hear about it. Like, what's the deal? What's the terms of the deal? What, you know, what made him resign? Who, you know, what made the Eagles go out and sign him? I wanted to hear more about the story. So I click on this podcast. And of course, like the guy does his intro, like, hey, we're going to talk about this wide receiver. And uh, the, but of course, we got breaking news here. Sam Bradford's resigned. We'll talk more about that later. Fucking an hour 
<laughs> of just like, well, well, what do you think uh, the Eagles should draft a cornerback? What if they draft a cornerback? I, like, I, I don't care. The, you're the like, you're the official podcast of the team. Like, get to the goddamn content. <laughs> Well, and what I found is the more you tease and put the whatever you off, the less you actually have to say about it. Like the news does that all the time. They're like, oh, this big thing that you must know coming up at eleven. Well, the and problem it's is like eleven fifty-five. Like, oh yeah, by the way, there was this one person that got shot somewhere. Good night. Well, the problem is like you know, like you think games journalist content like goes bear at certain points in the year like try being a football writer <laughs> yes. like like they were hoping that there would be like sam bradford drama for the next like two months well um and that's why and it's funny because they really shoot themselves in the foot because they've already burned through it but like starting about the day after the super bowl like here's bill's mock draft and then the next day it's like here's dave's mock draft and like and then they'll just keep like doing mock drafts and it's like Nothing has changed in the meantime because there's no yeah. sports going on. Yeah, my mock draft is just we're making shit up that yeah. a team could do. And then the next and, one's just well, we we had to change it slightly so that we had something to talk about today. Yeah, okay, you know, last week I thought they needed a cornerback, but now I really think they need a safety. Like, okay, but you don't work for them, so I think we should do that with game stuff though. Like, take a game that's in development but it's still like a year and a half off and like every week we'll bring it up. Nothing has changed as far as the development, but be like, we'll just do like mock drafts of like yeah. street fighter characters who should be added <laughs> and when like <laughs> in the third pick, it should obviously be uh, saying it. You know? Well, what do you think the mid range combo should be? Should it be forward, forward, back swoop forward again? I, I like uh, I like quarter swoop back, uh, half swoop forward, uh, high punch. Well, that would be interesting. But if they went that route, then could they still do that with Zangief, or would it feel too repetitive? Like that's the kind of like back and forth we need to do. Yeah. <laughs> but since Street Just Fighter Five is actually out, we're gonna speculate on Street Fighter Six, which will come out in like. Well, no, we gotta we gotta do five because they're gonna keep adding characters. That's, That's how we keep the mock drafts going. You know, we can't can't do a mock draft if we don't even have we like we don't even know who the players are for six <laughs> yet. Um, just realized well, I'm doing I, what I was complaining about the podcast, putting off well, the witness well, discussion. Well, um, if it if it helps, I'm putting that off too because I don't care. I, the witness schmidtness. There you go. That's the spirit. <laughs> Steve will be back with us later after I finish talking about the witness. Um, so I, I finished the main game, um, and, and I kind of last week I was on, I was in kind of a bad place with it because uh, I was getting to really frustrating areas that I thought like the game was either not being clear what it wanted me to do or what it wanted me to do just seemed so fucking horribly tedious. That I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to go through the process of getting the solution because it's a pain in the ass. Since then, I, I do have to say the game really turned around. Um, by the time I beat it, I would say 85 to 90 percent of the puzzles I think are pretty well designed. Um, the way it plays with perspective is really smart. Uh, it, like yeah, overall, I would say the witness is possibly the smartest puzzle game I've played um, for and in some ways it's to its own detriment a little bit because <laughs> it's well, too smart well a little bit like it just gets sort of caught up in its own systems that it's like it, you do, it feels less clever and more just like you're just sort of smashing your head against the wall with like what you know about the game systems by the end like just sort of like oh god get through this so I can just see how it ends and then you see how it ends and you fucking uh, I, I you know I, I I'm kind of torn if I should spoil it or not but it's not really much of an ending um maybe it is if you do everything there is to do in it which I, I thought it had multiple endings which is weird for a puzzle game like that but well it's even weirder it, i'll just say what happens because i don't 
think it really matters. Um, cause the, like the experience of doing it all is enjoyable. I like exploring the Island. I like just sort of coming across these puzzles and having to sort of figure out how these puzzles relate to their environment and how you need to look at the puzzles to solve them. But by the, for my ending, I guess, where I just sort of did everything you needed to do, um, you, you solve the last puzzle and basically the fucking elevator from Willy Wonka appears you get in it and it flies you all the way around the goddamn island showing you everything you did and takes you all the way back to the start of the game and then it says then it says start a new game (laughs) like you can't even go back to your old save like it because the game is just like it, when you turn on the witness, you just turn on the witness and it puts you back right where you were. There's really no menus or anything. Um, you can start a new game from there, but it's not like a, like the witness. Press X to start and then load your game. Um, and, and so, and like, and I, and I wasn't that mad about that because I was like, I, I really didn't want to keep playing the witness after that point. Like, I was sort of just like, yeah, I'll go back and I'll do that side stuff another time. You know, like I'll, I was going to, you know, put it off a little bit. Uh, but I, it was something I planned to go back to eventually. Just, you know, wanted a little break. Um, so I'm not really that disturbed by having to like redo a lot of those puzzles again. But uh, I, I find it really weird that a game that is just so based around just having this open environment to explore and solve puzzles at your leisure has an ending that literally like ends the game for you because there's like no plot really there's like there's no there's no reason they are obligated to just end it like that like there's no like reason for that to happen and, and i thought it was a baffling decision well but what you don't realize is now in real life you do own a candy factory and are also kind of a slave owner in the process, but <laughs> like, you know, but I, I kind of said it on Twitter. It's like, you know, I don't know why I'm surprised. The witness is just full of baffling design decisions. Like, well, well that's, that's what I mean when I, I say like, you know, it's almost too smart for its own good. Like it, it's not like, it's not so far up its ass. Like, Fez was um, where it's just like how the fuck was anybody going to solve that like everything can be solved um, it's it, it just it, it kind of maybe it reflects my patience but I didn't really I like I didn't feel compelled to solve every puzzle for myself um, if I thought something was going to be a gigantic pain in the ass I had no problem looking it up because um, like for me I guess it was more important to see what the next thing was than to like solve everything. Like, you know, there were certain mechanics, like I said, like most of them I wanted to solve because it was satisfying and like I could wrap my brain around the visual presentation of it. But if it was like, uh, like a lot of those Tetris puzzles, I would give it a shot. And if I didn't get it on like my first three tries, I would just look it up and just sort of, it's almost like how I did math homework in college, where it was like, which is always a great thing to compare a video game to. Yes. Um, where you would get a problem, and I would try to solve it, and then I would check the answer, and then I would see, like, oh, I've, I'm way off. What did I fuck up? You know, and I'd go back and try to understand it, and most of the time I never did. Um, but you had the answer, so that's all that mattered. Right. So, you know, th- there you go. Uh, and you help your odds when you do see how it's supposed to work. But, you know, I, I don't think I'll, re- I'll review it properly. I might write something up about it, but I feel like to review it when I'm, like, admitting I didn't really care about solving every puzzle for myself, like, I, I you know, it, it doesn't feel right to, you know, say, like... That's fine. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll review it based on watching, like... 20 minutes worth of let's play right like 
it, it, but it doesn't feel right for me to like say like oh it's too hard or it's uh, it's too easy or any of that shit because like it's a weird thing to say about a puzzle game but I really didn't care about those puzzles that really stumped me um and, and some of them like I said they didn't stump me it's just a like once I knew how you figured them out it was a gigantic pain in the ass to like actually get the answer well, like I, I'm talking like yo the only way this works is if you like take a screenshot and then like open up the screenshot otherwise you have to like you have a brief moment to remember what the solution was and that's just dumb like I'm not gonna do that for anything uh like you know, I, I'm pretty over the idea of like puzzle games where I have to pull out a fucking notebook and write shit down. So, and The Witness definitely feels like one of those games. Like it's really going for that sort of, uh, you know, real just sort of mind bending, uh, puzzle game thing that is sort of in the same vein as Fez. Although I will say The Witness, I think does that sort of thing a little bit better uh i just think i'm kind of done with that sort of extreme uh commitment to a game like this like it to me if like i can't solve the puzzle just visually um with the tools the game gives me and just the controller then i like like i said i had no fucking problem looking it up (laughs) because So, in other words, you're done with Where's Waldo. You're going back to the Seek and Finds and those magazines at the doctor's office where those the banana is always the moon. You know what? I've always fucking hated Where's Waldo. So, like, yeah, I found him. Now what? Oh, you will flip the page, find him again. He's lost Fuck again, you. you son of a bitch. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's kind of... In this day and age with cell phones, you should just call and tell me where you're at. Yeah. But, you know, The Witness, uh, like, it does really cool things not just a lot of it's the perspective stuff that i really liked but there's you know for you know every area that it's like oh solve this stupid tetris block puzzle or just this annoying uh mechanic where you have to like pair suns together with your line um like as annoying as those ones were to me like for every one of those there's like 10 where it did something cool like uh, you're in the woods and you find a panel and the line needs to match it up to the frequency of like a bird chirping, like how a bird sings its song. And like, that's really, I thought that was really creative and really cool. So like I said, most of the stuff I really liked, most of the stuff I didn't feel the need to like look up shit to, but it also sort of takes away my investment in like yeah i oh i felt so smart after i beat the witness because like honestly i didn't you know ign did (laughs) because i was reading their guide um well but by the time you were done you had an appreciation for how smart somebody was at ign yeah you know i to my credit who is smarter the person who solved the witness without help or the person who solved it in half the time because he he didn't give a shit right looked up hell that's like saying, oh, I, I built my house with my bare hands, literally no tools. And it's like I built my house in half the time because I used a hammer. Like, yeah, I, I had tools. And, right. uh, also, there are companies that know how to build houses, so I looked them up. Yeah. <laughs> but, you're, uh, yeah. You're not a cheater. You're evolved. But yeah, you know, overall, I like the game. Uh, I just, you know, I, to me, it's a flawed one. It's... I, you know, and it's also another one of those it seems to be the story of the year for me where I hear people talking about it and I'm like I don't feel like we played the same thing like it, it's alright no I was talking to uh, a friend over the weekend that just finished playing Firewatch and he was talking about how much he liked it and how much he liked that you, it's like you don't have to really do anything you get to just like walk around and enjoy the environment and how much he liked the story I'm like huh I, I Everything just, you just said is the polar opposite of what Ben said. No, it's a, it's the same. He's saying the same thing I am, but his reaction to it is and well. My reaction is well, yeah, and it's fucking boring, right? And and his like his reaction and the reaction of a lot of people is yeah, I walked around and did, did nothing. It was awesome, and I'm I like, saw why a tree? Is, I I, I can beautiful. go out and see a tree. 
I, you know, tell me a story. Well, well, it does tell you a story. It's a story about how you can't escape, you, you know, your routine or what. And I'm like, I, is it? Yeah, like all the the only thing that happens in the story is the guy escapes his routine for like three months. You know, it's I I don't get it. I, I'm I you know, I probably never will. I don't understand what people see in fucking Firewatch that like and I was super excited for that game. And I I have no idea like why that appeals to people to have a game where you just do nothing. Like, yeah. even if it sets it up interestingly... You name a turtle with an awesome pun. That's like... Yeah, and that, like I said, uh, back when I reviewed it, that gave it a point five, yeah, uh, extra to its score. And I, I think that was the right call, um, editorial uh, speaking. Um, <laughs> that is how we... We should be more transparent. Like, I used to... I, I, always talk about how much I hate when they break down like graphics uh, this this and that and then you just add them up and that's your score but we should but we just need to make our criteria the most random shit like could you name an animal something that's a pun yes Sir Reynolds yeah yeah plus 0.5 too much yeah. orange minus 0.5 oh just canceled out uh, you know it, it probably would have gotten a full other point if like in fact, it probably would have gotten an eight, like a eight out of ten at least if it revealed at the end of the game that you were playing as the turtle the whole time. Yeah, and it was just his, this fucking crazy turtle's fantasy. Um, or the the game ends like with the turtles three ninja brothers murdering you in the sleep for messing with yeah. her. Yeah. Oh God! Like how fucking cool would that have been? Yeah. If like. Because when you, they call it adopting the turtle. Like if you adopted the turtle and like when when you get back into your tower, like on the next days, the turtle will be in a little box uh, by your bed. Yes. And how cool would it be if he had the fucking bandana on? Right. And then the three brothers came to, because you, in <laughs> essence, you, you kidnapped up. him. You didn't adopt a turtle. The turtle was already in its natural environment. Or your splinter. Well, yeah, that could be. That's what I'm saying. The game needed a twist. Mm -hmm. um, Ninja Turtles is always the way to go if you need a twist. If you're writing a story and you don't know how to proceed, Ninja Turtles. I, I sure hope that new Ninja Turtles game is good. I it want looks, a good Ninja Turtles good. game. God damn it. It's not the Rocksteady one I want, but... It's Platinum. Yeah. And that is... Pro and it, for me, that might be better. Because... Platinum made me really happy last with Bayonetta 2, and Rocksteady fucked me over with Arkham Knight. Fucked me over specifically. I believe that game was I, an it was because everybody else seemed to think it was okay, when, except for the like technical issues. Because they're insane. But Once again, I'm the only sane one he left. Well, it's because all the every single one of these developers, when they're making their game. You know, you go through your phase where you design the basic concept and you flesh out, like, control and graphics and quality assurance. Well, there's also a Ben phase where they say, what can we do to specifically piss off Ben that nobody else will notice? <laughs> yeah, they, you know, and that's a, that's a long list. You could fill that out with a fucking toilet paper roll and run out of room. In fact, people, if you want, to, if you want more reasons to hate Ben, that's why most games get delayed. They're good to go, but they have to figure out how to alter them slightly so that Ben... That, I, that actually makes me happy. <laughs> like, I, I was, you know, everybody else is like, fuck, Uncharted 4 got delayed again, and I'm like, great. I don't want to spend any more money. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I will play that game when it comes out, but I, the longer you can put it off, the better. Sounded like um, there are some rumors today that the new Mass Effect games going to be delayed and I'm like I didn't know it even really had a target like I haven't heard crap yeah. about it like well they said it was being pushed in 2017 and I could have swore I read that already like a month ago um, I didn't know it was expected this year because we haven't other than like the name do we know really anything about it like yeah we, well I mean they put out that really brief teaser right um the Uncharted one is funny, though, to me, because they just, like, released that trailer where they got busted for having uh, Black Flag art 
Oh. I didn't. I didn't hear about that. You didn't hear about that? Uh-uh. Like, there's a. So they released a trailer, and the original trailer had a like. There's a like. It's like Nathan Drake, I think, talking to somebody, and and they're in like a study sort of room, and like above a fire is a picture, like a painting of a boat by on a beach, and that I guess was concept art for Black Flag. Like they just removed one of like the character and people like and then like the assassin's creed people were like what the fuck that was that was our art and obviously they have nothing to do with uncharted right um and yeah and so like naughty dog was like completely caught off guard and like uh well, yeah you know we didn't we didn't vet that completely. yeah if, if it was because that sounds like it was just background you know texture yeah. and so that tells you one of their texture artists is like fuck i don't feel like drawing a boat well uh one of the theories was that like maybe it was like sort of an independent artist who was just grabbing a random thing from his portfolio but uh okay. but uh, you know still should have uh, made sure you were getting original artwork yeah for that's your, one of the fun things when you're an artist if you have something in your portfolio that you did for another company it's no longer yours like mm-hmm. you get credit for it but you can't just go around reusing it well no but i removed the character so now it's a new piece my guess uh, is that they do what i always do when i need a graphic for something and you just go google boat on beach yeah <laughs> So they uh, they, they, they might not have their... even removed the character, you know. That could have been somebody on the internet did, and then they turned around and like stole the Google image from somebody right. else. That it's like so uh, they yeah they uh, took down the trailer, replaced it with a new one without the uh, artwork. But I suspect they probably have to go back into the game, yeah, and double check and like replace, everything and make sure that. That I wish that they would have gone. fixed it, and the next time they re-release a trailer, it was the boat from the Simpsons wall that's like behind their couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Like, well, damn it! <laughs> tell us which boat we can Google and use. Then Are you telling me we have to draw everything ourselves? Yeah, it's my like the picture is like my fear and loathing in Las Vegas picture that I have up on my wall. <laughs> it's just some freaky ass Ralph Steadman drawing. Uh, like, no, that's original work. It's hard making games. And that's. <laughs> supposed to be like sarcastic but not it is it's very hard to make games it is hard making games but technically if your job is a texture artist you need to probably art some texture well that's that's what's frustrating to me is like how the fuck did you not get like one fucking guy in all of naughty dog to just paint you a boat on a beach like (laughs) why was that like why'd you have to go looking for that like 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 you have artists just fucking pay them and they'll, now i'm hoping that like 80 percent of the cutscenes in that game are just stolen from other things so like at some point they're going to be running to get on a boat and somebody will be like where's your boat and then it'll cut to forrest gump that's my boat <laughs> they just like replace nathan drake randomly in certain shots with like master chief and... <laughs> uh, well it's like the uh, well if Fine, if we're going to call him out on that, how about in Assassin's Creed 2 when you meet that character and he says, it's a me, Mario. Be like, you stole that. <laughs> well, they did, and they, sh- they should be charged. Nintendo is probably up in arms about that, even though that definitely falls within parody, like fair use. Well, dude, Nintendo doesn't like Let's Plays. I They'll fucking... <laughs> they're not going to settle for that. I'm just going to like randomly throughout our podcast are going do 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 do. Nintendo thinks they own all of Italy at this point. <laughs> oh, they probably do. Probably. So, yeah, that got delayed to May. Um only a couple of weeks, which is why I think like it has to be something like that where they're yeah, like well, they're just not sure. Didn't it wasn't it delayed into April just like 2 weeks ago or something or like a month ago? Like I thought it was just recently. Yeah. delayed it's weird to have a second delay like within a couple of weeks of your first delay yeah i didn't even catch like the april one like i i still thought it was coming out in march and then like oh it's coming out in may now and i guess it was supposed to come out in may april a couple of weeks ago so i could be wrong so I'm, I'm far from the definitive source on uncharted news but yeah but the game does look good yeah 
for it. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, yeah, you're not a huge Uncharted guy. Neither am I, really. Well, like I said, it's hard for me to. So far, my opinions are formed based on the demo, like the five minute demo for Uncharted 2, and the first quarter of Uncharted 1. And that's um, a bad yeah. situation. And I still hold up hope that it gets. Well, I know it gets better, uh, unless this is one of the situations like you where my opinion vastly differs from everybody else in the world. That because even Uncharted fans will tell you that one was a little rough and that it. Right. Well, but but I'm also I am in that position a little bit because everybody swore Uncharted Two was brilliant and like to me I was just like, yeah, I mean like the action set pieces you know are pretty cool but it's you know overall to me it's just kind of this awkward uh awkward platformer and kind of mediocre shooter um and and, you know it it can lead to you know a fun little you know sort of popcorn game but yeah it's not that's what i get is because even in one as much as i hate the gameplay so far like the story and the characters and stuff are still really cool because it's just that campy indiana jonesy adventure Mm -hmm. like and nathan drake is a fun character so far yeah Uh, and and that that serves the series well the thing i'm curious about particularly with four coming out is like is this sort of just overly cinematic style of game is that going to hold up the more like the more uh i would say like more deep well, deeper, not more deep. Uh, deeper games kind of are able to match that. Um, like, is it enough that you did a crazy jump off a train? Uh, or, like, do you need a little more behind it? Um, like, basically, did was Uncharted, like, the product of just sort of... PS3 needs, like, you know, just sort of this next-gen powerhouse. And Well, and what was interesting for me is playing Uncharted or starting it anyway for the first time like recently like just a couple months ago um so it was well after i played the new tomb raider not the i guess <laughs> it's not the new one now because rise is out but um the tomb raider reboot and i really liked it despite like hating so many things about it <laughs> individually but going back and playing uncharted it it's it was immediately obvious like in playing this like wow i can really see where tomb raider got a lot of its like uncharted obviously got its inspirations from games like the original tomb raiders and then those kind of lost their way and then uncharted comes along and does what it did and then the tomb raider reboot like it's you can see some really like strong influences there so now when uncharted 4 comes out like is it going to build off of how tomb raider built off of uncharted or is it going to still just kind of do its thing like i don't know it it really does need to improve because like you said now so many other games do the part of what uncharted did well which is that you know over the top action cinematic storytelling yeah all right, I gotta turn off my heater. It's. I like it. Like I, I thought you were too. firing up like a biplane over there or something. Yeah, yeah. I, just levers. I'll be right back. <laughs> Awkward silence is a lot easier to edit out. It'd be nice if, like, my room could stay, like, a consistent temperature without having to crank that up. <laughs> this time of the year is fine for me, but before long we'll be back into summer where it's like, oh, now air conditioning's at play. Like, do you leave it on and not be able to hear anything, or do you turn it off and die? Right. Um, some of our best shows, and by best I mean worst, were... <laughs> Ones that we, I remember back when we were still just doing the um, audio podcast uh, and not even live, you know, just recording and editing it and like in the dead of summer where we were both, you could tell like. Just fucking miserable. Yeah, it's a thousand degrees and you don't want to do anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, those were, those were the good old days. Um, like now, 
like now I I turn on my heater before we do the show and like my goal is like warm up the room and then I'll turn it off when the show starts and I always forget after the show starts so in the middle of it that happens it just cranks on and it's fucking loud and obnoxious that was one of the interesting things though about I had talked about how the division one of the when you're in the dark zone your microphone's just always on even if you have push to talk set uh, unless obviously you mute your microphone but you'll come across players that are playing as one guy I swear he was playing from like a bus depot because it was just like like some V8 engine he's sitting on top of while playing the game. Yeah. In actuality, he probably just had one of those like ridiculous computers that like, or fucking just a bad microphone. That that too. Or maybe that's how he breathes. Like he's on some kind of mechanical breathing apparatus. (laughs) Darth Vader in the dark zone. Sounds like a comic book. I tried when the when the open beta came around a, a couple weeks ago. I was trying to get enough people that wanted to get together and just like roam the streets as a barbershop quartet. <laughs> I would, I would, I wish I was like in that beta just to snuff you out. That's the problem. Is like that would be the best way to get everybody to open fire on you. Yeah, oh yeah, I would, I would delight in it. That would be all I would do in the game is just wait for you and three Nimrods to start singing. But if you were all really, like, good at improv, you could, like, continue your song but, like, start working in things like take the flank and, like... Well, well yeah, you, you would be, like, singing your song, but I would be, like, sniping and just, like, humming along with you <laughs> as I, like, take you out one by one. Uh, I, I want to play that game, but I, I feel like... I'm doing. I'd be doing myself a disservice to play it on the console, because I've just heard the game looks so good on PC. Yeah, but on the PC, you worry about getting it and it not running well. My, well, you worry Although, about you worry about that on the console now too. Yeah, that's true. That's that's why you know that's the fun thing is like it really does go, like. It, it, there's no reason to be proud of a, any particular platform anymore because all the problems are now just they're shared. There's yeah. no logic anymore to it. It's like, well, the PC will always look better. Well, not necessarily if it's a crappy port. Well, the console will make sure it runs well, not necessarily if it's a crappy port. <laughs> Nothing ensures it, and that was the problem I had. Like I, I thought I'd have some stuff to talk. Well, I mean, I got stuff to talk about, but some new games to talk about. I was able to get um, an alpha key t- for the calling, and I don't know if you've heard about that calling, like C U L L, not calling, like on the phone. Um, it's like a multiplayer deathmatch. Like basically, it they take like the Hunger Games idea, where it's like kill or be killed, and make it a video game, but a very brutal one. And uh, they had a alpha weekend last weekend, and I got a key for that. But I could not get the damn game to run. It would do the splash screen and the logo, and then as soon as it would go to load the menu, my video drivers would crash. And one of my biggest pet peeves, the game's website is just the Steam forums, like the Steam page. Like, they don't have a website. Yeah. And I think the only thing worse to me than having your Steam page be your official website is having a Facebook page be your official website because neither of those things are those are those are outlets to use but that you should have a freaking web page yeah well there i had that same problem with layers of fear while it was still kind of before it got its real release was like any information you wanted about the game you had to get from their board and it was like that is not a good way to distribute information um, you know, when's the game coming out? What are you adding to it? What's this update do? Like, you would have to read it through there. And it's like Steam is good for telling you about a game and like buying a game. Right. But the specifics of it, or if you have problems, it's, I, I think it's a real pain in the ass to navigate. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, Adam Osor in chat has <laughs> really good for you. He prefers a Steam page to a Reddit page. So. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, Reddit's a dangerous place. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
but the issue uh, with the bigger issue for them not having a and I guess it could have worked out too, but they didn't seem to be particularly active in their forums during the alpha weekend, which is kind of perplexing to me because I thought that was the whole point of an yeah. alpha. Uh, that's the other thing is like you do, like developers go silent. Yeah. Uh, it turns out they're not really outspoken people. <laughs> But oh. uh, so I'm having this problem and there was other people having the it wasn't like a mass like the entire boards were a fire with people saying my drivers are crashing. But it was a it wasn't just me. It was other people having, the, you know, at the exact same spot, the exact same problem. And there was no official response to it like, oh, well, you know, this is happening or it's an issue with this or we're looking into it. It was just silence. Um, yeah. And so that was frustrating. And I last I checked, which was like. Monday, which the alpha was closed anyway, there was still no like official response to that. And it's like, okay, so I was a little disappointed. I didn't get to check it out. Um, plus, it sucks when yeah. they actually send you a key and you're like, okay, I'll provide coverage. Can't, like, your dumb right. game doesn't work. Um, but anyway, when I, I, towards the end of the weekend, when I couldn't get that to work, I was like, you know what? I've had Flame in the Flood. I don't know how much you know about that game. Um, but I've had it since early access, and it's actually like recently, within the last two weeks or so, released. And I'm like, so I technically have the full version of this game, and it's relatively new. I should probably play it and maybe do a review, or at least check out how it's different now than it was, um, you know, in early access. And of course, there's some kind of bug with the full release version where when I load it up, I get like, I start out getting about three frames a second. And then it just steadily gets worse, like to the point where it's like, <laughs> oh, there's a minute in between like screen updates. And I checked into that and that's a known issue that they're working on. But that's frustrating because it ran <laughs> fine in the early access. I, I hope I hope that's a known issue. I, it would be a bad sign of like, well, I, this a, is how it's supposed to be. I don't know what the fuck you're all <laughs> bitching about. Well, what I mean when I say known, it's that that's the fun part of the world of PC gaming is you never know if it's just your particular like system. Or right. if it's something wrong with the game, and in that, and in this case, it seems to be something wrong with the game. Um, it doesn't affect everybody, of course. That's got to be the worst feeling in the world, where you're like, "All right, our game's done. We're this is it. This is the real release." And then, like, you put it out there, and like, "Yeah, it's fucking broke." Yeah, like, and like, it's especially since it ran perfectly fine for me in early access. It's like, okay, so now that we've had time to iron everything out here you go it's like i can't run it now <laughs> what, what what did you do uh, so yeah i didn't play any i ended up that meant i just spent the whole entire weekend playing rocket league mm. again but snow day's back back in like the actual I, I, I read that from you uh that's that's good yeah it's, except it's I, right I, where and now i can see what they were doing they're geniuses because before i was playing nothing but snow day i was like fuck anything with the bouncing ball because it's too hard and when they took it away it forced me to go back and play the regular rocket league and i got better at it and so now that snow day is back i play it but i kind of go back and forth between like actual rocket league and then the snow day mod so yeah and uh i think i think it's on the eighth you can get the batmobile for rocket league which will make it the best game ever oh, god because we can't, yeah, it wasn't enough to ruin one game it has to a fucking car has to come back for another one. But another this would victim. be a game where it's fun to drive the Batmobile. And and you got to consider that not only will the game then have the Batmobile, but it also has the Back to the Future DeLorean. It'll probably control like floaty crap like it did in Arkham Knight. So it, you know, the Batmobile needs to be stopped. I hope the Batmobile down. has a special feature where you can hit the eject button and shoot Batman up in the air to knock balls down when they're like, cause I suck at the rocket jumping stuff and timing, but if I could fire Batman at the ball, that would work. That's, that's the only thing about the Superman versus Batman trailer that intrigues me is the fact that Superman doesn't have to move out of the way of the Batmobile. <laughs> just like, he just like lets it hit him and then fucking spins out and hits a wall. And like, man, fuck that car. Yeah. Fucking dumbass, stupid ass <sighs> car. The movie looks terrible. I, yeah, I can't get over the and I get it, but I can't get over the stupid armor that Batman's wearing. It's like, yeah, well, he needs it to fight <laughs> Superman. It's like Bat Mac, but know. now he doesn't look like he can turn his head slightly to the side. Like, 
Well, Ben Affleck doesn't look like he can turn yeah, his head to the side anyway. True. So Batman obviously, or Batman, Superman obviously wins because he's got super speed and he could just always stay in his blind spot. Like, <laughs> Batman doesn't even know Superman's in the room. Right. Yeah, I, 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 maybe we talked about it on the show, but I just I can't get over uh, how Batman's supposed to be the world's greatest detective, but he can't just be like, oh, you're Superman. <laughs> like, but... You, no, no, that guy, he has glasses. I can't, can't <laughs> <Wait. laughs> run a, run a face check. Ah, it's the Joker. <laughs> like. You know what? I've never seen Superman and Lois Lane in the same room. It's obviously her. <laughs> he, just, obviously. Like, he shows up and just beats the shit out of Lois. And Lex like, Luthor. Am I the only one that had no idea Wonder Woman had anything to do with this movie until like the last possible second? Like, no, nah, I, 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 you might. I, if you followed it, they announced that pretty early on. Um, but it was kind of one of those things. Like, is she just going to show up at the end, or you know, like how much of a role is she going to have? She'll and throw then the lasso of truth around both of them. And be like, now, boys, how do you really feel? I, I was telling a coworker today. Like, I just, I don't like fucking super aliens like because they're they're too powerful like to me i need like my superhero i like the predator he's not a superhero though but he's, he's super a, and he's an alien he's not super he's sure just he is he kicked that a, whole like army battalion's ass like he, but he's he's got equipment if anything he's more like uh batman or the punisher of well aliens. batman's super batman's not well he's a ninja <laughs> but he like he, Super to me, I mean, like, invulnerable to yeah. shit that would, like, kill a man. Um, and and Wonder Woman and Batman are all kind of that. Um, and really, DC just has shitty heroes. Yeah, Superman's, like, the biggest bullshit hero in the world. Because they've well, just, just added so many, like, really... convenient powers to him, too. Like, yeah, and he's just, it's not... Like, I get it. You needed to start somewhere with superheroes, but he's just not interesting now. Because, okay. like, really, this is how fucked up people are, but we like to see heroes who can get fucking wrecked. Well, uh, because it's at least identifiable. Like, Superman's like, oh, he's a man of steel. Nothing can hurt him except this rock. Oh, yeah. by the way, he also has ice breath. Oh, and laser eyes. Oh, yeah, and he flies, too. Right. Oh, and he can also... It's like, stop adding stuff. He quit. <laughs> God damn it. He's like basically invulnerable and flies. That was all he needed. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the one thing I thought was interesting about Injustice is they made him the bad guy. Well, kind of. That game's weird because there's like timelines. But uh, what one Superman is the, the bad guy. Which it's is, probably the one that got audited by the IRS and he's like, fuck. <laughs> I I need to destroy all human institutions. <laughs> um, Sorry, Superman. You can't write off twenty five cents every time you change to the phone booth. Fuck! I'm an immortal. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Um. I you know. So uh, off off superheroes. I I did finish up the first batch of uh, Dark Souls DLC in my in my random ass streams. Um, this one, this one, uh, was called like crown of the sunken King. I think that was the first one that came out and it sucked like overall. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I remember the first one coming out and people not liking it too much. I thought the second one they liked a lot more. Yeah. I, and I'm about, uh, I'm about to jump into that. Um, now but are you this, finished with the main story or is this like I'm doing it. where it kind of comes in? You kind of have to do it along your playthrough, um, but you do get something in the main game for doing it. And and I, you know, I, I got further into Dark Souls two quicker than I thought I was. So I, I'm literally like outside the last two boss fights, which is kind of they're kind of chained together. So I like I'm right outside the final boss basically. And so I said, "Fuck it, I'll go do the DLC. I might as well. I have this version of the game." Um, but the first one just takes you into like this underground cavern ruins thing where everything is fucking gray. So already starting off on a good note. Um, cause, cause that's the thing about dark souls is like, even though it's like dark and it's kind of this, uh, 
gritty sort of fantasy world like visually it's not uninteresting yeah it was one of the first things i noticed when i when you like started playing through the game was like wow this like it still has this foreboding atmosphere but like hey look there's color yeah well i mean you'll go to these like medieval fortresses and stuff and it's all you know it's it's familiar settings but then like you go down a floor or something like oh my god i'm in a giant spider web um which is obviously my favorite part of the game um but this one you it's pretty much these ruins there's some interesting enemy types in there like there was these uh ghost knights who have like just these twin giant long swords and when you attack them you can't fucking do any real damage to them uh you know i tried to fight one and i died uh and it was just kind of this, like, maybe I'm not supposed to be here, like, but that shouldn't be the case. I'm, like, level 150. I should be able to fight anything. Might not win, but I should be competent. And then I found out that, like, it, it was really, it was actually probably the highlight of one of my streams was, like, I just, like, oh, shit, I'm surrounded by them all. And I just run through hallways, and I end up in this long-ass room where all these ghosts like their bodies are in tombs and you have to like kill their bodies to sort of make them real and so i figured that out but as i'm running in a circle killing their uh killing killing the bodies the ghosts are following me but they're all falling into the pit that is in the middle of this room so I'm like preparing myself to fight like five of these fucking things and then I turn around and they're all dead. <laughs> well, it works. That was a crafty it, That is yeah, that is the Dark Souls experience. Is sometimes you just have to bumble your way through to that figuring in, uh, stuff out. Dragon's Dogma a few times where you're fighting like these giant trolls and you end up like forcing them to stagger backwards off a cliff and you're like my well, yeah. work here is done. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, and so that was the highlight of that DLC for me because after that, um, like there was a like co-op specific like this boss fight was really made to bring other people in. Um, that was really hard because I could not find other people until like I finally got like one competent guy to join me. So I was going in with the, like this AI team and they fucking sucked. And it, you have to fight like three. Uh, ba- they're like they're basically Dark Souls characters, and they're all really fucking tough. Um, and then I beat them, and it's complete. Then I learned it's completely optional. Like you don't, you don't have to fight them. It doesn't like extend the path. It doesn't give you an alternate route. They're completely out of the fucking way. <laughs> it was just to showcase like co-op, probably. Like yeah, and all the DLCs I guess have a boss like that where it's kind of out of the way and it's meant more to fight with people with it with you um and that and that's fine as like an extra thing and i'll probably do the other ones too because it's interesting but then i got to like the real boss fights and the first one was kind of interesting it's this goddamn singing creature woman and then she summons this giant knight who was a boss fight from earlier and he fucked me up a couple of times um and then like so i I'm not a fan of the setting, but there's like enough interesting stuff that like, oh, this could pay off well. I wonder what the final boss is. A dragon. Like, and and keep in mind, in the main game, I've already fought two dragons. Like, so this game... I didn't know. Well, they made this one uh, breathe poisonous fire, and this one, just like when you hit it, it fucking destroys your weapons. Just... Like, you, you cannot fight it alone without, like, your weapons breaking. So, and I have a pretty good sword, so I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how is this almost broken? Um, that fight sucked, and I just hated the fact that it was another dragon fight. Because the dragon is probably the one monster that this game is not really made for. <laughs> because, like, think of the good dragon fights in Dark Souls One. It, 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 like, all the dra- hell it, besides the dragon that's on the bridge, which doesn't really fly around. Like, you shoot it, it comes down, and you can fight it. Right. Um, 
by like the other dragons one is the fucking gaping dragon which is just this dragon that ate too much shit and now its stomach has a mouth and it's just I, a I, goddamn monstrosity and I, 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 i've always wished like ever since that that my stomach had a mouth because that'd just be direct like access I, I i'd be worried to like become aware just because <laughs> <laughs> I, I i the moment i see teeth on my fucking gut i'm gonna off myself um well, that's when you know your body's figuring out that the head is optional. Like, yeah, we'll just cut this guy out altogether, and we'll just. Or, or, but the other one was like Seath, which was like this dragon who was like he drove himself fucking crazy trying to become a master of magic and knowledge and shit, and he's just covered in cursed crystals, and you know, he covers you in them and fucks you up. And it's like these really interesting boss fights that, even though these characters are dragons. Like they're not, they're they're not dragon fights per se, um, and then this one it's just a dragon flies around and he if he wants to he'll never fucking come down and the camera can't really look at him, and it got to the point like I, it, it was really the first time in Dark Souls two where I was like for a boss I was like I have no real strategy here except to summon guys. Hope they distract him while I just shoot the asshole with arrows because he's not going to stay on the ground long enough for me to hit him. Um, so I was pretty bummed about that. I, you know, overall, I'm really liking Dark Souls 2, but that DLC was fucking bad. The trick is you were supposed to start talking about timeshares, and that would have put him to sleep. Then you could attack him. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Sin, like the slumbering dragon. See? So you're not wrong. I'm still kind of caught up on this whole poisonous fire. Like, does fire need to be... Like, how do you get poisoned by fire? Because for the poison part to hit you, you're already burning, which is plenty. Yeah, it, to, well, yeah. well, this time you get lit on fire, and then the game's like, you're toxic! Yeah. And they're like, oh, great. Damn um, that toxic fire. I, should should well, I, I guess actually it could be heal napalm. myself? Yeah, should I heal myself, or should I just, like, let this yeah. kill yeah, me? Yeah, toxicity in those Souls games sucks. Yeah. Well, because you, you always have a limited thing that can cure it. So you kind of have to weigh, like, am I actually going to get him this time? Um, and usually the answer is no. Um, I remember in the first one, relatively, it was that same bridge that the dragon was you were talking about. But if when you went underneath, there's, like, a little room right at the end that had, like, three of those fucking rats that are, like, the easiest thing in the world to kill. But if they bite you, yeah, it's like, ah, yeah, get, getting poisoned, especially in the beginning of that game, is just the fucking worst. Yeah, because like I've gone all this way and I beat, I killed this thing, but now I get to watch myself slowly die, and there's nothing I can do about yeah. it. <laughs> Maybe I can make it back to that bonfire. Nope. And uh, even if you do, you have to rest to heal, and then that respawns. You have to go kill everything again anyway. You might as well have died. Yeah, but except I guess you don't drop your souls. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, I'll be tackling the next DLC shortly. Uh, was it the Frozen King that was next? I was thinking. It's the uh, the Iron King, uh, I think. The Lava World. There's... And then uh, after that, it's the, I want to say the Ivory King, which is the snow snow place. Um, yeah, you, you know, I, I've heard better things about those ones, so. Hopefully that but that means you're nearing the end. Yeah, I am. And that's what's fucked up is like, that's why I'm doing this. Because at first I was like, well, I just want to beat it before Dark Souls 3 comes out. And now I'm like, well, that'll be another month. So, yeah. so I got time for this DLC. Yeah. And I've just sort of accepted that I'm... So let's go I, I don't really, into from one to the other. Yeah, I don't really get burnout on that type of game anymore. I just... Which is crazy because I get burnt out on it before I'm like halfway through them. You, you get burnt out on games that you're like 10 hours in and yeah. it's like, hey, you're halfway there. Well, fuck that. And then other times, like I just finished Dragon's Dogma a couple weeks ago and I think I put like 100 and some hours into that. Which is just baffling to yeah, me. Yeah, because it's like the most repetitive. I, I liked the game, but I mean, it doesn't get more interesting the later it goes. Yeah. But. That Did was you, uh. Did you hear about No Man's Sky costing 60 bucks? <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. Because it was interesting. I think it surprised everybody. I didn't expect it to be a $60 release. Well, I didn't know. I didn't, that's, 
The only problem I have with that price is, and it's not even a problem necessarily, it's more caution, is I don't actually know what the hell they're doing. So I don't know if it's going to be worth it or not. Well, and the the thing, if if, if you miss the whole story, um, an update on the Sony store kind of leaked that it was funny because at first everybody's like, it's $60 and it comes out this Thursday. I'm like, it doesn't come out. I mean, <laughs> no. it comes out in June or it's what the, the site says. And like, maybe they're going to like Ninja release it on you. But what it really is a pre-order supposedly will open tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and the price listed was $60. But of course we don't know. That could be like a $60, um, Sixty dollar like special edition or collector's edition or something too. So maybe that's not the uh, like the actual base price, but it probably is. Um, I understand being like disappointed by that. I was surprised by it. It makes me a lot more cautious because it's one of those games when they first announced it and they talked about what it's going to be. It's like, yeah, this sounds really cool. And as Adam Osor in, in the chat saying right now, it's the same thing I thought. It's like, well, for sixty bucks they've shown very little actual gameplay and to be right. honest what they have shown didn't really excite me <laughs> and yeah. it looked relatively boring like other than the whole like explore space and there's like almost an infinite number of planets to discover and explore it's like yeah that sounds cool but does that mean like an infinite number of planets to just like walk around and like point your scanner thing at things like yeah, I, it, and that's what I mean is like, you know, I don't know what they're actually making. So that, you know, I become less willing once you hit that $60 mark to like take a chance on a weird experiment. At the same time, the like the idea of a game like commanding that price, uh, like it makes me a little more hopeful on another level where it's like, okay, they're not treating this as this weird little thing they're doing. Like, they, they think that this, like, they're putting enough in here that it justifies that price. And, you know, hopefully they make good on it. I'm just, I'm not, I'm probably not going to be a gambler on well, it. Well, we might not have to be. The thing to keep in mind is if it still comes out in June, which is what they've been saying for a while, there's still three months between now and then. So that's, and there's multiple game shows, you know, like conventions between now and then. Not to mention, you don't need a convention to, like, start showing off your game so they have plenty of time if it still comes out in june to like show us what their game's about but it is a little weird that it's gone this long and that they're about to apparently open pre-orders and we don't know what the game is well it's it's kind of weird when you think about like how many delays that game has had like how just on that criteria how little we know about it like and you know it could be the fucking best thing ever but all i know right now is that you visit a lot of planets um what is actually on those planets beyond dinosaurs i'm not really sure um so but yeah but it has uh procedurally generated noise like dinosaur sounds so one dinosaur might sound like Rah, and the other one will sound like ah <laughs> <laughs> you did all the voice work? Yes, I did. You're the procedure. Can you tell, like, you've listened to this show long enough, being on it. Um, we're both... Oh, that like, doesn't mean I listen. VO quality actors. Yeah, you know, that's that's another thing on my resume, is I went, ah, on our podcast. Mm-hmm. We should do that. We should start, like, putting ourselves out there and be like, well, I'm available for voice work. Do you have a resume? Be like, yeah. I am available. I'm not going to show it to you, but... Do you need, like, a nasally fucker to just cuss in your game? Call me. (laughs) It would be fun to, like, convince somebody to let you do voice work in their game so they send you the script and just, like, watch their face when you send them the audio files back (laughs) and they're just like, oh... I, 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 you know, I, I know he doesn't have a lot of range, but I really thought he would have tried. <laughs> I feel like that was me trying. <laughs> I have three voices in my repertoire, all of them Ben. But yeah, so that what I d- didn't get with the announcement was like the amount of people that were like 
Well, I mean, I get it because it always fucking happens. But people just like flat out pissed off, like screaming and like threats and like oh blah blah. blah. It's like, calm down. Like, if you're that mad that you're gonna have to pay sixty dollars for this game, that means you wanted it badly enough that you'll probably pay sixty dollars for it. Like, if if the game it wasn't worth that much to you, you probably wouldn't care so much that it's going to be expensive because you'd be like, oh, well, I just won't play it. Right. But, and, and it's weird, though, because people do always act like, you're going to charge that much for it and I'm going to have to buy it. It's like, you don't have to do anything. Like, if you don't think it's worth the money, just don't play it. But yeah. uh, but no, I do I'm... completely understand, like, the, the reluctance there because I feel I've been as excited about that game when they announced it as anybody. And then since then, not like getting any more from it. And then no the more info it, except like, here's the money you will give us. Like, that is, yeah. You know, I, I understand caution. Like but I'm said, not I mad at them because if that's how much they think their game's worth, or if that's how much they need to recoup their development, like this whole idea that it's, well, it's indie, so it shouldn't cost that much. I'm like, well, that doesn't mean shit. Like, right. You know, and and we're seeing probably more so this year than any year, like just because it's like an indie studio working on something, the things those small studios are capable of making has grown substantially in scale. You know, like, you know, I was talking about The Witness earlier and like maybe that game's not for everyone and I certainly have my problems with it, but I don't feel gypped by the $40 price tag. There's enough content there that I I see where they got the price for it that they did. Right. You know. But the other funny thought I had cuz all these people were getting pissed off. They're like 60 bucks for a game where you just fly around and look at planets. I'm like, well, that's you just described Star Citizen and that game's like $135. Like Well, that's absurd. It it is, but <laughs> It's like, how dare this indie game be half the price of this AAA game that's doing... Well, I guess technically Star Citizen's indie as well, but... It shows. Oh, and in, yeah. in fairness, you can get into Star Citizen for... I think the lowest is 75. Like, they have some weird-ass uh, monetization model where it's like you have to buy game packages in order to get into the game. And, like, the cheapest one... The seventy-five dollars, and then one hundred and twenty-five, and one hundred and thirty-five. But then there's like ass loads of real money transactions. Like, oh, you want a decal for your ship? That'll be twenty-five dollars. I wonder how many people are like me, where your brain just turns off the moment somebody says game packages. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I'm not paying yeah. you a fucking dime. You yeah. said game packages. That's that's my well, safe word. My my typical like rule of thumb: if I'm trying to buy a game and I can't figure out how. I'm not going to buy your game. Right. Like, I, Elite kind of lost me with that. And uh, Adam was talking about that a little bit in chat, um, how boring it got too. But it was a really good, like, really felt well to fly your, your ship and, like, a really good sim. There just wasn't much to do about it and, or do with it. And then they came out with, like, oh, and now you can, like, land on planets and explore them. It's like, oh, cool. I'm like, is this DLC? It's like, no, it's a standalone. It's another $60 standalone, like, game. Pa- I don't know what they call it, but basically game, game package. Pack. It's like, you don't have to have the original one to play this one or vice versa. I'm like, so they're separate games? It's like, but no, they're in the same universe. It's like, what the? F-? They, they lost. I got so fucking confused. I'm like, okay, I'm not. The only way to play it is with an N64 controller, and then we send you one of those giant rumble packs, but it's got our pack in it, and then you put that in your N64 controller, and it's the same game, but you're spending twice the money mm-hmm. for the for the pack. Yeah. Um, if I can't figure what's going out on with like how, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Did you? Did you but ever? I, com- I don't know. I completely Sorry. forgot about those rumble packs. By the way. Yeah, I was gonna ask, like, did you like, did you ever have those, like, oh, those course. giant fucking ones? Like, you could fucking beat a guy to death with that. Like, it, like it made your N sixty four controller so goddamn heavy. Yeah, and it and it looked like it, it was kind of it was the same thing as like the Sega Genesis with like the thirty two X, where you're just like plugging shit into <laughs> it, and it's just this horrible. M- amalgamation of just right. crap and going through all that and specifically spending extra money to add a feature to your controller that i tend to turn off now like i don't 
like it. I, like, I don't really need my controller to rumble because... I, I don't mind rumble if it's like if it makes sense in like short bursts. I don't like when like I think a cutscene's happening and I set the <laughs> controller down and because I don't really care about the story in any right. particular game, like I just you know, I'm doing my own thing and then <laughs> on my fucking table right. and the goddamn controller falls off and not a fan of that. Yeah. Well see the thing is when I say I don't like it's more like if it's on I don't notice it. Like it's not like it's adding anything to the experience um, right oh well, i well i don't I, I don't mind it um i've seen some subtle uses of it where like if a game's like stealth based or something and or if there's just like a threat coming at your character and there's sort of a slight vibration because you like have to kind of feel something big coming yeah i mean um, i guess there's some really good applications for it just like not. shadow of the colossus like I think that rumble really helps give those creatures a sense of scale, um, but you know sometimes like yeah, uh, like the Metal Gear Solid thing with like Psycho Mantis, like it, it it was cool at first, but like other games trying to take that idea of just so blatantly like put the controller on the ground and watch this and then zzz, like yeah, yeah okay. Now, short of the Rumble Pack, you you have to admit with the Dreamcast, like it lasted about a year. But at having a well, that was the other thing with the Rumble Packs is a lot of times you had the like stupid little memory like save things as well. Sometimes they plugged into the console itself. Sometimes they were in the controllers. Right. But the Dreamcast, like, oh, we're gonna have this stupid like save cartridge but it's also going to have an lcd screen on it and you can play games on them like you never yeah. did because the games are always stupid and dumb you but... can you can find these fucking eggs in sonic adventure sure. and you can watch them grow on your memory card or you could go fucking play a video game it's up to you really right. uh, <laughs> whichever you want now if, <laughs> yeah. you, if you play the games on the lcd there's a chance you'll run the battery down and then lose all your save files but that's <laughs> Not a big yeah, like I know people like the Dreamcast, but that fucking controller sucked. Yeah, like the goddamn cable being on the bottom and just like <laughs> that was like one of those decisions that you know was made just to be different. You're, like, yeah, they didn't you're test like, it at all, but they're like all those other systems with cables on the top. And you're like, what the fuck? And like just how it felt, it, like it felt like a shrunken down like Power Rangers robot, just jagged edges and like. Who came up with this? A madman. But it had well, Shinmu. It did have Shinmu. It had Soul Calibur. I fucking I Soul loved Soul Calibur. Calibur. It was like the first. Soul Calibur is a great fighter if you weren't a fan of them. Yeah. Before playing it, like it was this. It was the perfect game to like really get you into it because it made like you could do cool shit with very minimal skill. Um. In fact, no skill at all. Crazy Taxi's best version was the Dreamcast one. Um, Power Stone. I loved Power Stone. I, I liked Skies of Arcadia at the time. I didn't. Get I, to I don't play think that. that. I don't think that game would hold up anymore for me. Dino Crisis. I think I played on Dreamcast, and there was also some other. That was like also that generation where it's like, hey, Resident Evil is popular. Let's make a thousand Resident Evil games. Like all have that exact same camera and like control scheme that sucks. Right. But there was Carrier. I think. Yeah. It was like an early version of Dead Space. Um, yeah. But probably better, because I don't like Dead Space. Dead Space is fucking great. It's the most scary thing ever. So many people that I follow, or that follow me on Twitter, like, if I say anything negative about Dead Space, they come out of the woodwork. Like I, I like the first one okay. It, like, it's, it, it is what it is. Like, it's not... I, I got sick of it. I, I, I guess it was more of a... Like, the game could have been cool, but I hated how backtracky the design was. And I couldn't get over the fact that it's like, oh, man, I'm this engineer that just, like, found myself in this weird-ass, terrible, like, situation. But there's also a military guy on the ship, but he keeps asking me to be the one, yeah. like... But you like, need to do yeah, this. I've got all the machine guns, and I'm military trained, but can you wander alone into this dark ship and turn the power on? It's like, like, but but it turns out all the engineer stuff is way better at killing these monsters than guns. Apparently, yeah. 
Because, well, they just fire bullets. You fire saw blades and you have to di like, dissect these fuckers. I'm curious so. how you're carrying around all these saw blades, let alone reloading the thing. Because of space, goddammit. Pay attention. <laughs> uh, if you're an you engineer, go in, you Because you go into the pots, you, you go... So. Shh, shh. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm not a fan of Dead Space. Like, in it... I don't know. I think it's one of those I'm probably overly harsh on it just because it didn't do what I think it should have done, like the way I would have designed it. Yeah. But... Uh, well, I mean, it has a happy ending, Dead Space 3. Everyone loves that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I like the first one. I heard the second one was really good. I just, I never had a chance to play it. Never got it. I th I think the biggest thing that bothers me about it, we've talked about it before, was that instead of being one of these more subtle horror games, it was like a, yeah, we'll throw enemies at you every chance we get game. Right. So I think I'm just approached it always from the wrong, like, headspace. Um, two, I played a little bit of the co-op um, demo, I think actually with Derek. Uh, and it's like, yeah, as a shooter, that was a little cooler and the, the environments were really cool, but it just still wasn't what I wanted. And I think I will admit that part of it is it has to be a really special game in that horror genre to get me because that genre is so daunting from like a mental aspect. You, know, you got to build yourself up to it. Yeah. Like when I'm working and like stress, like come home after a stressful day at work. Time to unwind. Yeah. Get the shit scared out of me. Right. So, yeah, I mean that's a pretty big hurdle. Most most games in that genre don't. Yeah, you have to you have to be a very special brand of psychopath to, like, yeah, that was a long day. I'm gonna honestly, fucking Dark Souls is the same thing. I was for about me. to say, like, yeah, Dark Souls is definitely that same, and that's part of the reason why it was always so hard for me to keep progressing in that is because you get home and you sit down you pick up the controller and then you just kind of go Ugh. well you know just wait one day i'm gonna fucking make you sit down and you're gonna play it you're gonna play through it all i it's, i'm probably next time the first one is on steam sale i'll grab it again because it'll be the third time i have that damn game but um it goes on sale on steam for like three dollars all the time so yeah, just it's always of, it's always dirt cheap. Yeah, so I'm just kind of waiting for that again. Yeah. Right. Well, we're kind of at our time. We're I wouldn't our say time. time limit, but our time frame. Anything else? No. Uh, you know, Twilight Princess HD comes out this week, so hopefully I can get a little time in with that. See, see if the changes made it better. Hopefully they did. The division comes out one day before our next podcast. Which means I probably won't get to play it because I'm very much banking on the servers, like just not. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the thing about it. So, two weeks from now, we'll have conversations right. about the division. But um, uh, I, it's just been a weird start to the year because every time, like, a batch of big stuff comes out, it's like, okay, wow, that was weird, but we're through it. And it's like, oh, wait, no. Now this is coming out and this and. Yeah, and I can't formulate an opinion on the three things I played before because something didn't work. Um, yeah, it's 2016 is a fucked up year, so be like me and just play Devil Daggers until it all figures itself out. <laughs> I saw you playing that the other night when I was playing Rocket League. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, I, yep. I lasted 134 seconds. Sweet. My top time, <laughs> and I'm like proud of it. Yeah, I got to play the game for two minutes. It's awesome. That sounds like an accomplishment from what I've heard, though. Yeah, I found the worm. I found the worm and the worm won. Now I wish you had said that before because that would have been a great title for the show. <laughs> you can put it on the audio archive. <laughs> but uh, all right. Well, uh, you people in chat, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us here every Wednesday at uh, this time. And... Well, not yeah. this time, an hour and a half ago. Um, yeah, I was waiting for you to jump into I, the ending. I, I, thought, I thought you were doing it no. this time. Mm. I can't take that. You're so good at it. I can't, can't take it's, that it's, from you. Yeah, but I'm good at it. Go to Enjoy Stick. Ah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, check out our content, our written content at enjoystick.com. You can find the official Twitter feed at enjoystick.com. 
can, can find Steve at Phaser3D. You can find me at BP Matlock. Uh, no, no dudes allowed. Ha ha. 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 <laughs>